Today we're joined by our special guest. He is a fitness model. He is um, a graduate of criminology and security studies. He's a model, an actor, an exotic dog breeder. He was a former Mr. Tourism Nigeria Southwest 2016, and he was also Mr. Tourism Southeast. Uh, his name is Olati Doye Benga. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us on the show. Let's talk about your um, your journey into the modeling industry. I know you're currently a fitness model, yeah. but I'm I'm thinking that the time you started, fitness modeling was not so much of a thing in Nigeria, was it? Oh, yes. So tell us, lead us through your journey through modeling. Okay. Um, before I got into modeling professionally, I just loved to work out, you know, because I used to be very skinny, very, very skinny. So um, I started working out. I posted a few pictures on Instagram. You know, that time Instagram was just new, so there was so much rave about it. So I posted some pictures on Instagram, and then someone saw the pictures. Then they sent me a DM. Hi, have you ever modeled before? I said, no. Would you like to model? I said, uh, maybe. It wasn't something I was so keen on doing as at that time, but I just loved to, you know, work out and look good. So I decided to give it a shot. I went to see him, Lake Shea at that time. I went to see him and he was like, wow, good. I think you should be a model. Would you mind if I train you? As at that time, you know, modeling was not something that every parent would want to, you know, allow their children. Plus, my dream had always been to be a soldier. So when I discussed it with my parents, they're like, it doesn't add up. You want soldier. to be a soldier and now you want model. to go into modeling. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Then my mom said, well, if you find pleasure in it, just go ahead. So I gave it a shot, started out with catwalking and all those things. And that was how I got into it. And when you look back so far, are there any regrets? Uh, not at all, not at all, not at all. Well, I started out with pageantry from being Mr. Tourism and all the rest. So I really got a lot of uh, encouragement while I was in camp. So there's no regrets. So what has happened to that soldier dream of yours? Do you ever think that someday you go back to it? Oh, yes, definitely. That's the reason why I went to school to still study. Because if I had decided to base myself on the skill I had learned, why be the model, I might decide not to go to school. But I'd always had that dream of probably being a soldier or someone who would work in law enforcement. So I still pursue that dream uh, alongside doing my modeling. All right, um, a while ago we had um, Oiza. Oiza is a model and she shared with us her journey in the modeling industry and how she'd experienced sexual harassment at some point. Yeah. I want to ask you, because you're also a model, you did pageantry and now you're a fitness model. Did you at any point experience sexual harassment? Oh yes, definitely. Um, several times. Sometimes from designers, sometimes from maybe casting directors, and sometimes room photographers. And how do you handle it? Uh, at first, it was new to me. When I first got in, it was new to me, especially because uh, you are a pageant king. Some people feel pageant kings because, you know, when we're in camp, we're made to go through lots of tasks. You know, you wear just briefs. You have to swim. You have to do all these things. So they feel you've learned to cope with the whole system in the industry of the whole sexual thing. So everybody feels, oh, He's probably aware, so I, I just need to throw myself at him. And then when it happened the first time, I felt so very uncomfortable. I, it really hindered my performance on that day. And then I spoke with someone. He said, this industry is filled with different classes of people. If you want to explore, if you want to grow, you need to have a way of understanding people, have a way of being able to say no but in a very polite manner. Being diplomatic. Exactly. So gradually, I was, I was going to ask him, how do you expect me to do that? He said, no, this is what I would refer to as self-discovery. You have to discover yourself. Discover the way to say no and be firm about it. But remember, you should not lose that job because there's several other models out there. So what makes you stand out is the fact that you're able to say no, but they see the professionalism in you and they still want to use you for that job. Will there ever be a time, will a time come where, you know, the modeling industry would be free of this rot? Although we know it's not just a Nigerian thing, it's around well, the world, sadly, to be fair. 
sadly, I feel Nigeria has gone too much into that trend of sexual harassment. Before coming to the show, I spoke to some models. You know, I told them I would be on the show. And I'd like you to, you know, tell me a thing or two that you've experienced. And somebody shared something peculiar with me, and it really struck me. She said, while growing, she met with some photographers. And this particular guy told her he has to touch her before he takes his pictures. And I'm like, why should he touch you? He said he wants to take pictures of her looking very sexy. I said, okay, if, you, if you're going to look sexy, all you need to do is to work on your facial expressions. Why should he touch you? He said, that is how he does. And I asked her, did you allow him? She said, no. Did he do the job? He refused to use her for the job. So that means he has gone to use another model that was going to say yes. Sometimes I feel some models are too desperate because you feel that 20K or that 40K or that 50K, this uh, photographer is going to pay you, pay your bills. You accept. It's wrong. And that is the reason why it's very difficult to cop it now. Wow, that's, that's really unfortunate very, that there's very. this much rot. So what would you say to a young model that is currently at a point where they're experiencing sexual harassment, but they need to survive? I mean, they need these jobs. What oh, would yes. your words of advice be to um, them? First, I always tell people, especially young models who are growing up, you know, I've met a lot of young models these days. I tell them, first, you need to master your trade. When you walk into a room, how do people recognize that you're a model? It's the way you package yourself, the way you walk, the way you talk. There are some models that when you see them, you, you find it hard to believe that this, such a person is a model. Like, where the, some things just don't add up. You need to master your trade. Now, be the professional that you are. When people see you, let them know that this person is what I want because of how good you are. So they would not be able to refuse you exactly. because of your excellence. You don't have to lobby for it. Even if you are sexually harassed and you say no, let that client call you back and say, you know what, I really need you. Your face matches what I want. Your class matches what I want. And that's what it is. Okay. You're also, beyond being a model, we know you've also delved into movies. Oh, yes. AM Battleground. You act, yeah. How was that experience for you? Oh, Battleground was fun. I had so much fun. I played a uh, police officer in Battleground. See, you are getting closer to that, your law enforcement agency <laughs> dreams. Are you not seeing Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. I was able to blend in very well. And the director was really very impressed. So after the whole shoot, the director asked me, how did you, you were so, you were so natural. And then I told him my story came out. He said, oh, yeah, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. I played it very well. How does your study of criminology aid your craft? You know, do you wish that you had gone to study something else? Well, I would not have studied something else. Maybe I may have studied psychology because um, growing up, I, I had this very quiet kind of lifestyle. I used to be very quiet, you know, basically because I was more closer to my mother and my mother is very quiet. So I started to study people a lot and he made me have this quest to learn more about people, how they how they think, how they talk. So if I hadn't studied uh, criminology, I would probably have studied psychology. Okay, okay. So now I also know that, before I let you go, I know, fun fact, you're an exotic dog lover. Oh, yes. How many dogs do you have now? Uh, presently, I have about six dogs. Six? What? <laughs> how, wh what breeds? And what, which one is your favorite? I, I just got one recently, of a German Shepherd, very beautiful. But my favorite, most... Favorite breeds is always the Bobo. So, um, which of the, the of the six dogs is your favorite? What's her name or his name? Oh, this, the the it's a female. Her name is Zoe. Oh, and she's very cute. Well, for we non dog lovers, because I've been traumatized by dogs. I was attacked by a dog at seven and at um, ten. Oh, two wow. different times. So two different I'm times. not really a fan of dogs. <laughs> what would you say is the most intriguing thing about dogs for you? Uh, dogs have a way of connecting with us naturally. If I came with one of my dogs here, you'd probably be scared, which is normal. But as soon as you see how calm and collective she is, I'll change. I, I can tell my dog, Zoe, sit here, and she's going to be there. And when you approach, I say, Zoe, say hi to Auntie, and she, she shakes you. Are you serious? You are going to be impressed. Naturally, you feel this is not normal. This is not something that dogs do every day. So that is how... I don't like people to see dogs as vicious animals. Yes, sometimes you need that guarding state in dogs, but not all dogs are vicious animals. 
Okay, uh, we have been speaking with Alati Doyegbenga, the fitness model, former Mr. Tourism Nigeria, graduate of criminology, yeah. an exotic dog breeder and dog lover. Very, very passionate about his dogs. His favorite dog is Zoe. At least that's the one thing that... <laughs> anytime I see you on the I'm going to be like, Hi, Benga, I have Zoe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining Thank us. You. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.